Hello and welcome to the Shiny Bees podcast, a podcast for those who like their knitting, comedy and yarn in equally large measures. I'm your host Joan Mulmine and this is episode 136, Yarn Advent Calendars, aka What to Knit with a load of mini skeins. I feel a need to laugh again with you, if that's alright. Hello, hello, welcome into another episode of the podcast. I'm your hostess, Jo, and I'm back again with another episode for you. How are you? I hope you've been well since last time that I spoke to you. If you're a new listener joining us today, welcome. I hope you'll enjoy it. And if you're a returning listener, thank you. As always, I really appreciate you coming back and spending some time listening to me again. So this week I've been looking at some yarn advent calendar ideas because there's been lots of pictures of people getting yarn advent calendars and taking part in certain projects and things for or as part of advent. Now I I remember yarn advent calendars didn't used to be so much of a thing uh, but they certainly seem, seem to become more popular recently And as a result, I thought I would do what I normally do and get together a few pattern ideas. It's mostly a knit vicariously through other people process, I think, but it can be a good way also to use up some scraps if you've got any lying around or if you've got packets of mini skins, you don't have to have splashed out on a full up advent calendar necessarily to take part in a lot of these patterns and have a bit of a go with these. So... Yeah, I decided I'll try and get a few extra episodes out in December. It's not gone that well so far. It's already the 10th and this is the first one, but never mind. And my kind of thought is, is there's a lot kind of going on at the moment and all, you know, the election is just exhausting and I'm not even in the UK and, you know, Christmas is quite hard work for a lot of people and it's busy and all of the things. So I thought I would try and kind of you know, welcome you into my virtual pub, if you will, in the podcast and try and flood the internet with a bit of knitting, really. Give you a bit of a distraction. Uh, Planning our knitting or just just diving into the knitting anyway is a good way of just processing things and a bit of creativity and a bit of planning projects for whenever, when you're maybe a bit less busy and it's not as hectic coming up to Christmas, can be quite cathartic. So... I thought I would try and do that for you. So we'll see how we get on in December. Like I say, it could have gone better. It's already the 10th, but never mind. Some is better than none, right? So let's just go with good enough for now. So if you are not subscribed already to the podcast, please uh, do go along and subscribe to the show on your favourite iTunes uh, podcatcher or iTunes um, app because I'll be putting episodes out on a different schedule and it might not be when you expect it to be. So the best way to get it straight away, basically, before anyone else is to be subscribed and then it will automatically go into your device, which would be nice. And I have a newsletter that I sometimes write when I feel like it. And you can um, go and subscribe to that over at the website, which is shinybees.com. And you'll find all of the show notes for today's episode will be at shinybees.com forward slash 136, which will have all of the links, etc., for these various patterns. So, you know the drill by now, go and get yourself a brie, mine's going to be a Roy Boss, and grab your knitting and we will crack on with the show. So first up today, in a departure from the usual order, just because I know you're all quite busy at this time of year and maybe you don't have time to listen to everything and maybe you want the patterns first... I decided I would start with the patterns and then afterwards I will give you a bit of a rundown of what I've been up to mostly, my woeful attempts at learning to do yoga, which is quite funny. So today then, like I said in the intro, I want to give you some ideas about how you can use up your kind of yarn advent calendars. Now, they have become more popular in the last one or two years, I would say. Some of them do come with a pattern already, which is awesome. If they come as a set, that's a lot nicer in terms of you don't have to think of anything. 
that you want to do with them, you've already got a plan. But if you don't like the pattern that comes with them, or maybe, you know, you're not in a place where you want to be splashing out just before Christmas on a yarn advent calendar for yourself, but you've decided maybe you're going to make one um, either by swapping them. Some people collect up little scraps of what they've got, make them into mini skeins or balls, and then they swap them with other people. Or you want to use up just some of your own stuff and the little bits and bats you have lying around in an advent style way, but without the price tag attached to it. And obviously it's always nice to use up those precious little bits of yarn that aren't really big enough for anything else. This is a quite a nice time to do it. So some ideas of what you could do with that would be good, really. Now, I've seen quite a few funny ones around, um, which is always good. I really enjoy um, the creativity of of the die as you put these together and they've got different themes and everything, which is cool. I'm not going to talk about any of those today because obviously anything I do talk about now, it is already the 10th of December you're not necessarily going to be able to get one. So it kind of seems a little bit pointless. Uh, But what I will talk about is some of the uh, patterns that you could consider getting involved in. Now, I know quite a lot of people decide to do uh, Frankenvent socks, Frankenstein socks um, for Advent, where you knit a certain colour into your sock every day and some of those themes have been carried on outside this in the in some of the yarn clubs that I've seen but the Frank Frank Invent I'm sure it's Frank Invent but the pattern is Frankenstein socks pattern I'll put a link in the show notes Um, the idea is is you just every day change to a different colour and they come out sort of all higgledy piggledy and put together but you can use whatever you want as inspiration for that day and whatever pattern you want and you just cast on your sock and every day you knit a certain amount I can see a lot of Uh, benefit from this and also it's quite fun to do if you're doing it in a group maybe if there's like an informal cal going on and you can see what other people are up to when they're knitting their socks it gives you some ideas and it just feels a little bit more community I guess but more fun to be doing it with other people and the commitment level is quite low because if you miss a day it doesn't really matter but I mean anyone can knit in 10 grams of yarn a day it's it's not that far even as um even in four plights you don't have a lot that you need to catch up on or anything like that it's just quite a small kind of time commitment and like we talked about last time there are different ways that you could scratch out that time to actually get it done whether you're waiting I mean I don't know if anyone even waits in Argos or the stores are available clearly anymore for things like do you remember when it was a thing to go to Argos and you had to like get the catalogue out and, and kind of flip through the catalogue none of this like electronic search rubbish none of this touch screen palaver like you had to flick through the catalogue and then you had to find it and write it out and then you had to go queue up again for the ladies at the till or gentlemen, and you had to pay that with real money at the till. I remember being maybe about eight or nine. I was allowed to go to Wigan by myself when I was quite young, so I'm obviously very sensible. And it was the 90s, like people weren't as bothered. And um, my mum's a great parent, by the way, just saying. And I remember having money to go do Christmas shopping. And it was one of our activities on a weekend to go and do go to Wigan, like me and my friend Stacey Clayton. I don't know where she is now, but I'm, I hope she's well. Anyway, me and Stacey Clayton would go to Wigan and we'd go looking around the shops and we'd go to the body shop and we'd try on like vanilla musk perfume, which apparently vanilla musk is still a thing. Twitter told me vanilla musk is still a thing. Anyway, it was all about vanilla musk and the blueberry one. They were like the smells and there was a pink one. I think it began with an A. Someone tell me if you know what that one was in the body shop in the like 90s, that perfume that began with an A, let me know. Anyway, we would go to Wigan and my mum had given me some money and I went to I went to actual Argos to buy a video game and the only ones I had money for, one of them I already had or didn't want, it might have been Duck Hunt or something like that. It was for my NES, my Nintendo Entertainment System, pre-Super NES. And the only other one that was close was... Uh, Legend of Zelda, like with the gold cartridge. And I thought I counted the money and I thought I had enough, but I was like 20p short. So it's like the week before Christmas and there's this eight-year-old in Asda or whatever it was, eight or nine, not Asda, Argos, trying to buy this Legend of Zelda game and I ain't got enough money and I'm at the front of the queue and there's all these people behind me because we don't have touchscreens there and they're all like waiting. I'm like, oh, this is really awkward. I was like, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I'll go pick another one. And then some some random in the queue gave me the 20p that I needed because I didn't have, I had like £7.79 and not £7.99 or whatever it was. And not that I'm scarred by this experience, clearly. 
But anyway, Argos, I don't even know where I've come from. I don't even know how I got down that rabbit hole, but I'm down it now and I need to come back. I need to come back now. And I can't even remember what, what I was talking about. But yeah, in the good old days, you used to have to stand in the queue in Argos and wait. And that would be a good place to get a bit of, you know, knitting done on your Frankenvent socks if you are knitting on them, if you're in a big queue. But you don't really have to do that anymore. And I'm not sure people even go to Argos anymore. I still do because I quite like it. Um, because they still have the massive stacks of catalogues. And if you haven't seen it, they've got like the Book of Dreams. I'll link to it in the show notes, but you can go and see all of the past like not episodes, past catalogues from Argos. Because I mean, picking your, your Christmas stuff from Argos was a massive thing. Like you'd sit there with the book and you'd be circling stuff and you'd be turning the pages over, hoping that Father Christmas is going to consult your Argos catalogue instead of like a letter and bring you all the things you hoped for. Then you know, that was how you did it. So, but you can go and look if, from when you were a kid all of the old Argos catalogues are online. I'm sure it's called bookofdreams.co.uk, but I will link to it in the show notes. And just going to drag myself, drag myself back to what we're supposed to be talking about, Joe, today, which is Advent calendar mini skin patterns. I do love Christmas though. I get dead excited. So you're going to have to bear with me in December because I just, I, I'm like, it's like I've got kind of fairy lights at my backside, really. I just, I just like it. I like the whole thing. So yeah, anyway, as I was saying, I've got some plans, some ideas for you. If you don't want to do Frank Invent socks and you don't necessarily want to get involved in that and you want to do something else, I have got some pattern ideas, trying to keep myself on track now, for you to consider. For some various different ones, some of them are free, some of them are paid, the usual format, so that you can, no matter what your budget, you can you know, get involved in some of these patterns if you want. And like I say, it's a really nice way of using up some um, partial skeins or mini skeins or bits you've got lying around in order to make a bigger project, which is nice. And yeah, let's crack on with that, shall we? <laughs> so the first pattern I've got for you is the Mini Mania Scarf. It's by Sarah Cave. It's a free pattern for a striped linen stitch scarf. Now the stripes on this one go lengthways. So instead of going across... The, the short bit of the scarf, they go down the length of the scarf. And the stitch looks really interesting. It's a linen stitch, but it looks different. It looks woven, uh, which adds a lot of, it just it elevates a kind of project to something that looks quite fancy, I think, particularly if you're good at picking colours that go together or you're lucky enough to have a collection of colours that go together or maybe a large mini skein pack that are all coordinated. That would be awesome uh, to use for that. So you need at least 12 five gram balls for the smallest size of this scarf and there are four different lengths but you can stop whenever you feel like it's wide enough. The fabric looks quite sturdy so I think it'll be quite warm and I've actually got a scarf that was woven from from leftovers but it's beautiful uh, by Liz Greenside Knits. It was a gift that I got at Pod Retreat and I actually wear this scarf loads because it's super warm and it looks really nice and I think this pattern would create a very similar effect if you're as good at picking colours as Liz is. So that's the Mini Mania scarf and as I said that is a free pattern. The next one is the Land of Sweets Cowl by my pal Helen Stewart. This is a paid for pattern. It's £6.5 or £15.67 as part of the collection. It's out of one of the knit vents. It is for a striped and patterned cowl. It's got some lace in it. It's got some texture in it. And this one has been designed specifically for those kind of advent calendars or bottles of mini skeins that you've got kind of lying around. Helen is, a, you know, she's quite a yarn collector. She does love her, her nice yarns. And I'm sure, having seen her stash, that it is, you know, a similar thing for her. She's got a lot of, of these little bits and bats lying around that she wants to use. And so she's created a pattern for that, which is, is super helpful. And it's a really popular pattern. It's got loads of projects on Ravelry. And I can see why, because you can use any colours you like just to create this really usable, you know, lightweight cowl that you can just quickly throw on and... You know, when you're out and about, if you're in the pub, then you can take it off, put it in your handbag. Happy days. So the next one I've got for you is the Stole of Many Minis by Sylvie Philippart. This is a free pattern. It's for four ply fingering weight yarn and you need 16 lots of 15 gram minis or 15 grams balls leftovers times 16 plus a contrast yarn. So this is going to eat through loads of these leftovers, which are, you know, I think is brilliant. And um, there are five different charts to follow, which should help to keep it interesting. And um, 
you know, you can play with the colours and the yarn effects to your kind of heart's content with this one to get, you know, different appearances in the end projects. That's The Stole of Many Minis by Sylvie Philippart. The next one is Lefty by Martina Baim. Always, you know, a good a good designer to go to if you're looking for particularly accessory patterns. This is a little bit of a classic. Um, it's been around for quite a long time. It's a paid for pattern. It's for Euro 90. It's entirely likely that you'll have this line around in your library already, to be honest. It's one of those patterns that a lot of people have already knitted. It's for a fingering weight shawl with stripes of colour that turn into like a little small leaf pattern on the edge, like an oval or a leaf um, that's done with short rows. Each one of those different colours, the pattern calls for six different colours with five to seven grams of each plus 130 grams of a main colour. What I was thinking is you could pull together different bits of leftovers so you could almost create like a, a change for the main colour, like maybe two or three changes of colour on the main colour and then use minis for the little slices with the leaves or you could do it the other way around and have a plain colour on the leaves and then in between each one use a different colour uh, of mini or leftover so you make the main colour lots of colours and then the contrast colour one plain colour potentially um, which will make it quite interesting and you can use loads of different colours like even stuff like a gradient and start use that as the main colour and take it all the way through could look really cool I think um, Loads of options for that one in terms of just thinking a little bit outside the box of what yarns you're going to use and how much of each one and not necessarily saying, well, I've not got 130 grams then, I can't do it. You know, we could use different ones to make that up and use some of those slightly bigger, um, maybe half balls that you've got left or half skins you've got left. So that's Lefty by Martina Bain. The next one is the Dazzle Hat by Katie Osterwald. This is a paid for pattern. $6.05 and it's named after the experimental ship camouflage designed by the Brits, hooray, in World War One. So the pattern is named after that because it looks like that, the hat. It's a garter stitch hat with stripes and it's got like four different panels in it and the straps were used as part of the camouflage, basically. It uses short row stripes, which is maybe a technique you might not have done before. I've not done short row stripes anyway. I've done short rows, but not in stripes. And it uses these short row stripes to create the effect of the camouflage, which looks really interesting. It's, it's quite cool. And there's lots of opportunity with this particular pattern to play around with all different kinds of colours. I would probably suggest um, planning them out beforehand on paper, maybe draw away a similar pattern and colour it in and have a look at it first because the short rows will play with the, the patterning of any pattern yarns in particular when you're knitting it. So it's just worth checking so it doesn't turn out looking too clown barfy, although I'm a fan of clown barf personally, but I would do it that way so that you know, you can come up with a sensible plan. And there are lots of ideas on the pattern page on Ravelry of different ways that you could use yarns to knit this pattern. So that one is the Dazzle Hat by Katie Osterwald. Next up, I've got the Greta Hat by Tannis Gray. This is a five-ply pattern for a stranded colour work hat. It is super colourful and fun. Um, but it only uses two colours at a time. So it makes it a little bit easier to, if you're not used to doing stranded colour work, to actually knit that because you're not trying to keep two, three, however many more in, in play. It's only two colours at once and it's a bit less fiddly. It makes it look really complex or even though there are only two colours being used, which I think is always cool. It's always nice to knit something and go, well, that wasn't that hard, but look how cool that looks. That looks really complicated. I'm so clever. Um... You need 68 grams of the two main colours and 34 gram of other another five colours. Um, so it's probably better for leftovers rather than um, the advent skeins, which tend to be a little bit smaller. Uh, so this is one of those ones that you're probably better off using your leftovers or maybe getting one skin to, to bring a lot of other leftovers together or one skin to bring a pack of minis together perhaps um it would be a better job for this one better better plan but again it's it's not about necessarily having the advent calendar there it, it's about using up what you've got as well so that is the Greta hat by Tannis Gray and the last one I've got for you today is the fox ki fox kit fox it fox kit. I can't read my own writing I'm terrible 
think it says fox kit but there'll be a link in the show notes shinybeesforward.com forward slash 136 so you'll find them all there anyway by Kirsten Jankook it is $7.26 and this is a pattern for some fingerless gloves slash mitts which you can knit in either fingering or worsted so it gives you a few options there and it uses up three to five colours 20 to 35 yards of each of those for the worsted and then fingering it's 40 to 70 yards now in this pattern there are various different options for the cuffs different options for the hands and different options for the the tops i guess like the the fingers the ends like the mitten part so you can put all of those together you can choose a pattern based on the yarn that you've got available or you can follow some of the suggestions in the pattern and you know create create something that you can wear all the time basically especially in this kind of weather with something like mitts can be super handy to have on you so you can still do things but not you know get cold so that is the fox it by kirsten jankook so like i said there'll be pictures for all of those and links for all of those patterns in the show notes so you don't need to remember them necessarily now show notes are at shinybees.com forward slash 136 for this episode and you can find all of the links that will link you straight through to Ravelry or wherever these patterns are available straight from the show notes so head on over there and check it out so hopefully those patterns will have given you some ideas some thoughts of things you could make with any leftovers that you have lying around or indeed any advent calendars you've been lucky enough to happen upon this year and be gifted or buy for yourself which is cool so yeah I thought I'd put the news episode today at the end for a change which was a bit of a last minute decision to be honest and um I thought I'd tell you a little bit more about learning to do yoga because it's been quite funny and I like telling you a funny story and obviously outing myself as that that child who didn't have enough money to buy the Legend of Zelda cartridge for Inez on a random total rabbit hole tangent in the in the last section that's what I'm like though at this time of year like I just sometimes I get giddy and you know I go off on one with the story but that's what keeps it fun you know you never know what you're going to get on this podcast that's you know that's the, the main thing right so uh, yoga I've recently gone on a bit of a not a drive I'm all, I've always been a person that likes to learn new stuff and um interested in lots of things I like to know how things work all of that kind of thing and I've recently decided that I need to do more exercise because it's just not something I've really prioritized since like having the kids basically because you don't have time you're kind of stuck in with them all the time and it's you know I'm not about to start doing kind of acrobatics with a absolute lump of a baby or anything it's just that's just was never going to happen but I joined a gym locally and one of my friends went and she's like oh you know oh you know Joe, maybe you should come to our yoga and I was like okay she's South African that's just my bad South African accent and I know she listens to this podcast sometimes so she, she's gonna kill me when she gets here and um <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, I'll come, I'll come try the yoga. And this was like a couple of months ago. So it was in summer and in summer here, it gets very hot and incredibly sweaty. So it's been, it's probably September because it, it wasn't super stinking, painfully humid hot. It was just sweaty hot. So I thought, well, I'll go and try it. Like, I'm probably not going to like it that much because, you know, my idea of exercise before that was body pump and, and circuits in the RAF. Like it wasn't really yoga, but my Gary Bonnie legs, and I can't remember if I ever told you guys about Gary Bonnie legs, but my sports massage guy back in the hood um, told me that I need to do some yoga for my shoulder because I've got a sore shoulder. That's why I go for sports massage. And he's like, it'd be really good for your shoulder. Well, he didn't say it like that. He's like, here, Joe, you need to do some of this yoga for your shoulder here I'll send it you on YouTube which he did and I did it for about a week and then I just didn't after that because I was really bad at it anyway I decided I was going to go to yoga class and I was going to learn it in Chinese as you do so I went to the gym and I went to yoga class and it's all obviously it's in Chinese we live in China like why would it be in anything but Chinese of course it is my Chinese is rubbish as we've already established a couple of episodes ago like I'm not that good at it I try but I'm like not that good so (laughs) I'm learning it, but it's good that you can, I mean, the teacher is really good. She she does lots of really good actions for the, the little Lao Wai at the back who doesn't get it, but 
it, it's obviously like you don't know what people are saying. So I have to keep turning my head to the side to watch. But luckily, because it's a it's a gym, the entire room is covered in mirrors, which is exactly what you need when you're like a 12 pushing 14 and you've eaten way too many steam buns recently. And then you're in, in the gym with all these, these grannies who are amazing at yoga, are super flexible and about a size four. And you're like the big monster foreigner just stood there at the back with your massive ass <laughs> that you can see when you're in a downward dog looking at the mirror obviously through your knees not that I know it's called a downward dog someone else told me that because I only know the Chinese word for it I don't even know what any of the poses are don't know because it's all in Chinese so I only know like vaguely what roughly the noise is um and the other disadvantage or advantage really I mean let's be positive the other advantage to learning it in Chinese is the Chinese are hardcore like they are good at stuff like when they're doing yoga they are doing the yoga there's none of this like half assed bending a little bit being crap at it no no they are in they are like nails they're doing it all properly like they're bent over in these all these shapes even the old ladies like the old ladies are the best ones and then there's me at the back who is not flexible at all not flexible at all not one bit. You know, trying my best at the back. And and as you will already know if you listen to this show for a while, like I, I find it difficult to take things seriously at times, um, particularly if I should be taking it seriously. So I'm at the back trying to like do these pauses on one foot, just laughing, just laugh. Like every time I fall up, because I fall over all the time as well, laughing my head off which, you know, only serves to amuse everyone further because there, there just aren't many foreigners around here where we live. So it's already a bit of a novelty that I'm there in my uh, unicorn, rainbow unicorn leggings, being rubbish at yoga and then falling over all the time and then laughing about it. So it's been really quite amusing. But I've learned to, to count backwards from five to one in in Chinese, which is good. And I've learned words for like breathing and breathe out. I can't say them, but I know what they mean when I hear them now. And then there are other words for the various hardcore things you've got to do. Like, so you're in a plank for about 10 minutes and you're moving, you're kind of, you've got to pick one leg up and move it from one side to the other and stuff. Like I know the words for that when she says them. Um, but I've no idea what any of these things are in English. Not none of them, not one. And I don't know if I ever want to know, really. I might just carry on doing yoga and mandarin after this but it's been quite an enjoyable kind of process to go through because it's it's quite scary learn I said this last time it's quite scary learning things as an adult because we expect that we've got all of the answers and that we should know these things by now and we should be more capable um, and maybe that's a ridiculous thing to think it, it is actually saying it out loud a ridiculous thing to think who's got all the answers that's absolute horse you know it's we've not none of us have but you have to kind of be vulnerable when you're learning things and put yourself in, you know, positions so that you can grow and you, you don't necessarily know how to do something anymore. Not that I did that ever with yoga, clearly. Um, so it'd be easy to go pick something that you may be a little bit better at or got a bit of natural talent at. <laughs> but no, no, I'm not. I'm, I'm just going to go join in with it. But it's, it's quite liberating. It's quite fun. And even though I can't like, have a conversation with anyone and people all try and talk to you like and I'm like I'm really sorry I don't speak Chinese um not well at all you know definitely but it's been a really good kind of thing to go into and I'm quite enjoying it actually and I am becoming slightly more flexible than you know a kind of two by four plank of wood like I'm, I'm getting a bit better at it and some of the things I, I'm quite good at like the strength things like standing on one leg or holding myself up I'm quite good at, at those but the bending thing may yo not good at that so it's been very amusing but I'm taking you know I'm, I'm aiming to be one of those grannies by the time I get to that age I want to look that young and I want to be that bendy so we'll have to see I'll just practice until I get there I'm quite lucky that the instructor is, she's awesome. Uh, <laughs> she does still try and help me, even though I'm obviously crap at it. And she she comes and helps with my technique, but it's, it's just not a particularly British approach to, to, to checking the technique. Like I, I'm definitely benefiting 
and I actually prefer this this method of instruction. But like she'll come over and put her hand in between my knees and then just like slap my ass t- to make me kind of bridge more. <laughs> it's just brilliant. I'm like, you, nobody mucks about here. And I love that. You know, it's just like, no, come on, higher, more, do it. Because obviously I don't understand what's being said. So I'm just like, okay, yeah, the ass slap works for me. Thank you very much, Megan. So <laughs> it's it's really good fun. The other interesting thing about attending the gym here, actually, while I think on, is like as a British person, I forget how British we are. Like being British is we are proper stiff about everything. (laughs) Really reserved about stuff. It is it's different and we are different. We're just quite conservative about things. Whereas here, people seem to be a lot more confident and not bothered about stuff that like for a Brit is mortifying for no real good reason just being British and the gym is one example of this so I put a picture on Insta a couple of times where I've had an argument with the stairwell because you've got to walk up two flights of stairs we don't have to walk they have a lift but I walk up the two flights of stairs to the yoga studio and on every stair riser there's basically like some abuse about how fat you are or how useless you are or you know like how you need to work harder (laughs) so it says things like shed sweat keep young face and uh, you are so fat how can anybody like you and I'm just like you're a set of stairs what you know what who cares about your opinion love like what are you doing with your life so that that's quite kind of you know fun and interesting on the way up the stairs and if the bar is not bent, you are not trying. <laughs> the bar is bent, it's probably faulty, but, <laughs> you know. Um, and the other thing that I find really interesting is having a super free and, and liberated attitude to your own nakedness, basically. Because um, uh, as a Brit, I'm like, no, I'm going to hide. I'm going to wear bloomers. Like, I'm going to have that the biggest towel. I'm going to kind of hide in the corner and not let anybody see me. I'm going to be super self-conscious. I'm not even going to take a shower at the gym because I'm too scared. Like, that's what we're like. Not here, no. Not a stitch on. Literally nothing. Just your flip-flops. Drying your hair in the mirror. Nothing on. Nothing. I'm like, I would love to be like that not arsed. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm just going to go dry. I don't even do it in my own house. Like, imagine being able to do that in public. Amazing. So, yeah, it's been quite different, but very enjoyable. And uh, if anyone's got any slight tangent uh, tips for me on the yoga front to improve uh, my game and not be quite, quite so bad, then definitely let me know, especially if, if you've recently started doing yoga yourself as well. I'm hoping it's going to help with the knitting because obviously it should help with the shoulders and everything else and posture and all that kind of good stuff. So yeah, yoga. It's awesome. You should try it. Anyway, that's all we've got time for this week. I hope you've enjoyed the show, particularly laughing along at the thought of my unicorn clad backside in the mirror upside down, Um, keeping it real since 2011. And hopefully you've also got some ideas of some stuff to knit with some leftovers or yarn advent calendars. So I hope you will all have a wonderful week. Happy crafting and I'll speak to you again soon. Cheers. You've been listening to the Shiny Bees podcast. Show notes for this episode can be found at shinybees.com forward slash 136. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing on iTunes or your favourite podcatcher of choice. 